The Slave Commander Do you know who was one of the best commanders of the Muslim army, the most honorable and loyal person, the most beloved to the Prophet? His name was Zayd bin Harith, and he was one of the most beloved companions of the Prophet. He was sold as a slave when his mother, Sartda bin Thuraba, traveled to meet her family with her son, Zayd bin Harith. She had reached the house she came to visit when bandits of Banu Qais raided the place, stole everything they had, and kidnapped the children. At this time, Zayd was just eight years old. He was taken to the marketplace along with all the other kidnapped children, where they were sold as well. Zayd was sold to a wealthy chieftain for 400 dirhams, Hakim bin Hazem Qawalit. When Khadija heard of his arrival, she went to visit Hakim as he happened to be her nephew. Hakim bin Hazem Khawalid had said that he had bought a large number of slaves and he would be happy to sell her any slave she had wanted. But something about the intelligence and noble look of Zayd bin Harith caught her attention. Upon the time of her marriage to Rasulullah, she thought Zayd bin Harith would be the perfect gift. As soon as Khadija had gifted him Zayd, Rasulullah had granted him his freedom. Zayd bin Harith was very fortunate to be raised by the Prophet. However, without their child, Zayd's parents were suffering a huge loss. They searched everywhere for him, and his father could not stay put at home. He would recite poems that are said to bring tears to every listener's eyes. He would travel from region to region, and there was no ground where he hadn't set foot. On the occasion of Hajj, some of Zayd's relatives came to Mecca. They were going around the Kaaba when one of them saw Zayd bin Harith and recognized him immediately. When the news came to his parents that their son was in Mecca, his uncle and his father rushed to Mecca. They begged Rasulullah to have their son back, and they would pay any price he wanted. Can I show you a method better than paying a price for him? What is this method? I will call him here in front of you. If he wishes to go with you, he is free to do so. I will not take any compensation for him. But on the other hand, if he wishes to stay with me, then I will not force him to go with you. You can only imagine how excited the whole family must have been finally getting their lost son back. They were sure that they would get to take Zayd bin Harith with them home. However, the Prophet ﷺ followed on his deal and asked Zayd bin Harith if he wanted to go with his uncle and father. But Zayd, with moments hesitation, said, I will stay with you. When Zayd's father heard him say this, he was very heartbroken. He said, This is very sad. Would you rather be a slave than stay with your own parents? Zayd bin Harith answered, Father, I am deeply moved by the praiseworthy qualities of the Prophet, the way he treats me with love and affection. I just cannot leave him and live somewhere else. When the Prophet ﷺ heard how deeply Zayd bin Harith loved him enough to leave his parents, he quickly rose up and took Zayd's hand and went to the Kaaba. He declared loud and clear in front of the chieftains of Quraysh, O family of the Quraysh, witness that this is my son and heir, and I am his heir. The father and uncle of Zayd were surprised to hear this, and also pleased. They went home, happy with Zayd's answer, because the Prophet was so caring and affectionate towards him. From that day on, Zayd was called Zayd bin Muhammad, until the verse in Surah Al-Ahzab was revealed, in which it said, Call them after their fathers, that is more just in the sight of Allah. One of the honorable things about Zayd bin Hadith is that he had no idea that the Prophet Wasallam's position would be elevated or that he would guide the whole world. He just had the trust in the Prophet because of his kindness and compassion towards him. This is one of the examples of how the way you act towards people makes a big difference in people's lives. Just a few years after Zayd chose to stay with the Prophet, he had received revelation. He was the third person who had accepted Islam. He was also one of the first commanders-in-chief of the army of Islam. Just as Zayd had shown great love for the Prophet ﷺ, the Prophet ﷺ showed great love for Zayd and considered him a true member of the family. When Zayd would leave on a mission, the Prophet ﷺ would pray earnestly and be very happy to see him return. Aisha Razia Ta'ala Anhu said that when Zayd bin Harith returned to Medina after a journey and came to their door, the Prophet ﷺ got up quickly to answer it. 
When he saw that it was Zaid, he smiled widely and gave him a warm hug and kissed him on the forehead. Aisha Razitara Anhu said that she had not seen him greet any other companion this way. This is why Zaid bin Harith was known as Beloved of the Prophet, and his son was known as Son of the Beloved of the Prophet. Soon, in the eighth year of Hijra, the commander-in-chief for the Muslim army was captured and killed. Muhammad Wasallam appointed Zaid bin Harith as the new commander-in-chief for the Battle of Mutar. For the battle, Muhammad Wasallam had said that if Zaid bin Harith was murdered, Jafar bin Abi Talib would take his place. If he was to be murdered, Abdullah bin Rawaha would take his place. A white banner was raised and given to Zaid bin Harith. Zaid bin Harith took leadership and fought with his full strength and bravery until he fell. The Muslims suffered a great tragedy in the battle against the hypocrites and Roman Empire as all three commanders were martyred. The day Muhammad Wasallam heard of the death of all three commanders was very sad. He went to the house of Zaid bin Harith. His youngest daughter hugged him and sobbed. The Prophet also started to cry. Zaid's daughter asked, O oh, Prophet of Allah, are you also weeping? He answered, These are tears of a beloved for a beloved.